Okay, for this edit, I just want to do another kind of portrait of this chimp's face here. Most of the time, well, all of the time with my editing, I don't really know where or what they're going to end up like. I just kind of fumble my way through it until I get something I kind of like. If I don't like it, then I just scrap it and start again. And I can go and see that if I was to edit, edit this again in maybe a week's time, it'd probably look completely different. It's just how I feel on the day and what I kind of think looks good. So the first thing we're going to do is crop the image to where I want it. So I just really want this part of his face. I just want like a face shot really. So I'm going to change that to a square and just include most of his face and leave like an equal amount of space each side of his head. If you always look up in the top here, it, I think it gives you a bit more of a better impression before you actually click. But yeah, I think something like that. That'll do, mate. So if I go click back on the edit tool, that's already edited that. Not edited, sorry. That's already cropped that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the exposure just a little bit and lower the highlights and maybe bring up the shadows just to see what I'm working with. It's got a little bit of a blue tint, which I don't like, so I'm just going to warm it up a little bit more. And something like that. I can see a bit of a slight green tint here, so I'm just going to drop the greens a little bit. I think that's about right. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a heavy vignette by going over to where all your presets are and it's at the very bottom add a heavy preset a heavy vignette sorry um, then I'm going to add my own vignette by using the masking tool and click on radial gradient I'm going to pull down and create a circle roughly over the main part of his face, somewhere there. And then I'm going to click invert. So it kind of, it will only affect the red part and it will leave the middle out. Turn the show overlay off and I'm just gonna slowly in decrease the exposure around there and uh, maybe bring up the shadows a little bit more or even bring them down here yeah, bring them down a little bit and then going to click back on the three lines the edit tool and increase the contrast and maybe the whites a little bit and a little bit of clarity um, I might then bump up the saturation and the vibrance. Then I'm going to right click on that and edit in Photoshop. And the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the layer and use the dodge tool, dodge brush. Click on midtones and make sure the brush is about the same size as the monkey's eye. And give that just one or two little clicks just to make his eyes pop a little bit more. Um, what I'll do then is I will duplicate the layer again. And this time I'm going to just see what Photoshop thinks the tone should be. So if you go to image and go to auto tone, it's kind of made it a little bit blue. Which I click off that. And on it you can see the difference now before I dismiss it and think no I don't like it you can always turn the opacity down so try turning the opacity down and then and then looking back and forth it seems to be adding a little bit of blue to me 
Now, I don't know what it is with me, but I've got a problem with blues. I just, they never look right. I think that, that kind of looks okay. Okay, so my next step is I'm going to try and tidy up the background here. You can see some of the old bit of the monkey in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten that because I'm happy with that and then duplicate the layer again. I'm going to use the pen tool, the pen, the brush tool, and I'm going to use press Alt and click over the colour I want to sample, and left click with the mouse, and then if I paint then over there, it will use the same colour, which probably, although it looks black, it probably isn't definite black. So I'm going to decrease the opacity and the flow and then just gradually paint this out. I don't want to use full opacity or full flow because it will just send it straight black and I don't want to do that. Just paint around the edges here. You can see some of the hair is a little bit lighter that's why I've got a low opacity and I don't want to go too much because I want to keep some of that kind of haze of the finer hairs across his back that have making it a little bit lighter what that'll do um, now I want to just kind of round it off a little bit I think so I'm going to keep that same color and keep the brush the same just soften up some of these edges I don't want it to be it's kind of like be like a shadow so I'm just going to just slowly and gently paint over some of the edges something like that um, then once that's done I'm going to Duplicate the layer again and use the sharpen tool and just sharpen around his eyes and his nose and his mouth. Just some of the bits that I think need a little bit of sharpening. Now, I don't like this bit of grass on him here. I think look better if that wasn't there I think it's a bit distracting so for this I'm just going to use the spot healing brush again make the brush as small as possible and then just paint over the top bit by bit don't try and do it all in one go because it seems to make more problems so I just generally do a little bit at a time Let's got rid of that, which was a bit of a distraction. Um, and I think that's more or less it. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to save it. Which will save it back into Lightroom when I open it in Lightroom. And as it was taken at 6,400 ISO, it's not going to be the cleanest image. So I'm going to just run it through Topaz Denoise. So if I right click and click Topaz Denoise. Editing Topaz Denoise. That opens up and I can just run it through there. Um, I know not all of you have got Topaz Denoise. Um, if you haven't, you can also use the texture tool to lower some of the texture. And also use the... Lou, uh, noise reduction part of Lightroom here. I'm not going to use clear. I always use low light. I just find it works better. I think clear can sometimes make it too um, look too pixelated. So I always lower the enhanced sharpness because I've already done the sharpening what I want to do. 
and just click apply. So that's kind of sharpened that up a little bit more. So not sharpened it up, um, got rid of some of the noise. Um, one thing I do then is I try another heavy, try another vignette around it because sometimes it will blend it in a little bit more, which looks better. No, I kind of like it the way it is. I think I don't think it needs another vignette on it. Um, and then the last thing, well, I've, I have noticed one more thing I want to do. The last thing I normally do is I just run through the presets in Lightroom. Just to see if there's another preset that might make it pop a little bit more to what I've, I've done it. And it might give me like an idea of which way to push a colour. Um, but for this photo, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm quite happy with the final product. So that's it. Um, I save it and it's all done. So thanks for watching. I hope I've um, explained a bit and uh, maybe give you a couple of ideas. As I've said, I'm no expert. I just fumble my way through it until I finish with something I like. So thanks for watching, um, until next time.